Oh no, and thank you. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to King Bespoke Creations. How are you doing? Yeah, great big thank you very much from this tiny little channel, which is just me in a tiny workshop. We've hit 100 subscribers and 1,000 views. Woo! That's down to you. You. Thank you very, very much. It's really, really appreciated for you to take your time out to watch these videos. It's a really awesome thing and makes me so happy. Thank you. Right, now then, on with this week's weekend project. Um, we're going to build a raw edge desktop, or you could use it as a tabletop or a coffee table. There's loads of different ways of doing this. Raw edge stuff uh, is, is really in, it's the gorgeous looking stuff. And you can buy it in great big slabs of oak and it costs a fortune. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make one out of scaffold planks. So how the heck do you make a raw edge out of a scaffold plank? I hear you cry. Uh, I thought you did. Well, let's go and have a look. So the first thing we need to do is look at the way that the growth rings are working on our plank. So we see here how these are coming round like this. So this is definitely going to be the top because I want the front of my raw edge to slope in like that. If I use this as the top edge, then the slope would go in the other direction. So I want it to look nice. I want it to feel nice as you sit against there and your arms on like this that little slope will just feel really nice as well. So that's the first thing to check out. So where the raw edge comes in will depend a lot on these growth rings and knots that we have here. You see this is a prime example at this point how we can take one of these growth rings which slopes in the direction that we want it to. Okay, so that's going to slope down there. So we let maybe pick that growth ring you can see there. As we move along, it's staying fairly consistent to the edge, but then when you get to the knot, it flows in and flows back out again. So we can pick and choose interesting sections as we go through. So this is the part we're really interested in, isn't it? How to get this flat edge to look like a live edge. So as I said before, I'm going to look at this wider grain that's here it's a very prominent grain and that tails off through the rings round there okay so all i need to do is split that off and that's exactly how i'm going to do it as well so i'm using a combination of um, an axe a wide bladed chisel and a knocking stick let's start with the axe first so again, you're trying to look at which grain you want to use, marking off roughly where you're going to be, and then holding that something like with the axe, and I'd tap that in. And you see from there, it starts to split. Okay? Now that split's going to happen very naturally, which is what we're after. We're after a very, very natural edge. So as I continue to tap that, there we go. All right, so that's the first chunk. And let's just have a look at what we've got there. Now, once we've taken that initial bulk off, we could go back into here and we could take off um, another few rings if we wanted to. But see how that naturally wants to split and give us that live edge exactly how we wanted it. We predicted it would go with those grains around the knot, giving us these nice sweeps. And if we look at it from the edge, it's not square anymore. It's gone with the rope growth rings. And the bulk at the beginning is going through like that, all the way down to the end, taking these big chunks off. So 
So after you've gone at it with the big chunks coming off, you should get something that looks a little bit like this. Now we've tried to follow the same layer all the way through, but wood being wood, it doesn't want to split completely. So you can see here where we've got light patches and then this kind of orange patch and then the light patch again. So this is different grain levels in the wood. And what we want to do is get it all down to the same level. Now, you might not have um, lots of big chisels and spoke shaves and specialist tools like this. Maybe you've got a belt sander. Well, that would still work. For the most part, we're going down to a colour match. You're trying to get rid of those different colours in the grains as we work through. So a sander would work just as well. You just need to be very careful you don't go through. Otherwise, you'll be chasing those layers all the way through out to the other side. The big advantage with using chisels and axes and things like that at the beginning is that it gets the wood to split in that very natural wave that we find with those wood grains. And that's what we're trying to look for, isn't it? We're trying to look for a natural raw edge. But if you want to finish this off with a power tool, great, why not? Sometimes you can struggle to see where each individual grain is when it's this rough. So at this point where I'm trying to find it quite specifically, I've just smoothed this edge off with the plane and look how you can see every growth ring that's there, look. So all we need to do is work our way down here and follow that grain ring all the way across and then we can work it back up from there. So this, this curve here is now getting too tight a curve for the spoke shave to actually get in there. So I'm just taking what I can off with the chisel, just very carefully. Trying not to take off too many layers. So here we've got down to the same level on both sides here. So all I'm going to do now is get rid of this bump, it's really quite large. I think that's a little bit too big to keep. Plus you can see that actually it's not the same level as we're going through, so we're going to need to cut this off. Here we go, so that's most of it chipped down, sliced in to get that physical raw edge. So you can see, looking at this next plank, there's a bit of a curve to it, but it's mainly down at that far end. So as I cut this plank down, I'm definitely going to take this end and see if we can get rid of a lot of that curve. Okay, so we're now choosing which lump of wood sits on top of which lump of wood. So here's the, the front panel. So this is going to be the top and we've got that raw edge uh, cut into the front there. What I also like to do, just again add a little bit of character and a way of getting your own branding in, is notice along here we've got these wood grains that are sloping up towards the join. What I'm going to do with that is actually just take a few slices from there as it peels up to actually create a crack in the wood. Right, so once we've decided that we can put this crack in, and again trying to follow the grain lines as much as possible, we can then try making some butterfly keys. Or in my case, I like to do my little crown logo, just to put a little personalised touch inside there. So, we can look at doing that. We've got a lot of work to do to get these to joint up as well. 
So as you can see, if we fold that out the way a little bit, this is still very rough inside here. So we need to plane that nice and smooth, make sure we've got a good joint all the way along. Um, and then we can work up starting to glue it all together. Right, so I've gone through with a small plane, a number four. Um, a rough plane to make it smooth, if that makes sense. So just a quick pass over to get rid of the really rough surface that just comes straight with these decks. Um, what I'm going to do now is switch from this plane. I could do it all with this, but I'm going to need to keep rechecking a lot as I go through. And I'm going to get one of my favourite tools out. It's this great big, big, look at that, look at that. Don't ever let anybody tell you so it doesn't matter. This is a Stanley number no. 7 and it's huge. Um, and it's perfect for doing joints, regularly referred to as a joint in plane. Uh, so because the sole is so long, uh, it means it gives a very, very flat surface. It gets rid of any little undulations as you go through um, and should hopefully make it easier to joint these pieces together. Right, so there we go. We've put the little crack in. So that goes through. It doesn't go all the way through. So because it's used as a desk, we drop a pencil it's not going to fall all the way through but we'll be, definitely be able to put uh, some nice keys in there now then do you remember when we had a look at the middle plank and it had a slight bow in it well you can see we've still got a little bit of one here it's only small though so that will all come out uh, when we come through to glue it up okay so the way we're going to clamp this up is actually use the clamp sideways on at the ends so that's going to hold the ends perfectly level and flat with each other and then we can move to the other side and put this one on so you can see there that's unlevel at the minute so as i pull this through and we love these quick grips they're awesome we'll see when we get there that it will just pull it level see that pull that in so by the time we've done that that's sat it's flush on the top so it's in there and that's a perfect joint that we've got on that section. Now that then just leaves us this bow in the middle, which isn't catastrophic, but it's more than I want to plane down, that's for sure. Right, so I'm going to put you down there. Okay, right, so now I'm going to go a long ways. I'm going to use these knotty sections here to put on. And all I'm going to do is just push this, because it's held at both ends. I'm going to push this in until I can see that that's flat and flush and then clamp that on like that one and that holds it so it's flush at both ends and it's nice and flush in the middle by the time we've put glue on there and clamped it like this that'll give us a nice strong flat section to work from to set overnight so here's the moment of truth if I remove these clamps we should find those boards stay where I left them take these end clamps off as well we love it when a plane comes together does everybody remember the 18 I haven't seen the 18 for years anywho desktops that's what we're building looks good Pretty straight. Yep, I'll take that. 
So that third plank has now been planed for jointing. So we've got a lovely joint all the way through there. I'm not gonna glue that on just yet, just to make it more manageable while I put those butterfly joints on that pre-made crack. I've just randomly cut out that crown to use as a butterfly key. Uh, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna want maybe two or three in here. So I've just randomly cut a size out and I think that will be the smaller size. So I want another one that's a bit, little bit bigger going there and then maybe a third one that's a little bit bigger still to head further along. Super glue and masking tape trick. So you put super glue on one part, a little bit of accelerator on the other, and then stick those on. And as soon as they connect, that glue will set. So you come to inlay these sections, these keys. Uh, I've done the first two, put them down to flush, so I'll show you how we did it. Um, this is basically just doing an inlay. This isn't uh, the structural butterfly keys that you might see elsewhere. Um, I will do a video on those at some point, but literally just marking off around that shape. With it being an odd shape, it can be a little bit tricky getting the knife in on the point, but just trying to work your way around and through. all the way around so we should now be able to peel that back off just take the masking tape off such a useful trick that masking tape and super glue right, just about pick those up so obviously now i can go in and just make those a little bit more pronounced so these ones that we can see quite well I can definitely just go in and make those a little bit better I'm just going to go in with the carving chisels because they've just got nice roundy edges to fit. you build a chunk out and have a look see what it's looking like oh, a million miles away there's a few places you want to extend it so this little corner here wants to go in a bit further There we go, that's that cut out. Okay, now I haven't cut that out as deep as the crown um, because this was just cut out of a random chunk of wood. It doesn't need to be as thick as this. Okay, so we're gonna put some glue on here now. We're gonna bash that in as, as tight as it'll go to get that wedged into there. And then we can just leave it for a little while to for the glue to set, plane it flat like we have with these.
about the two foot strip done which creates quite a pile of shapings to start us off with right well i decided to break out the scrub plane you can see it's got a big curved blade on it and a really thick cut as well so it takes off great big chunks in one swoop you can see here how each of these little grooves that's one pass with the with the blade and it's getting windy now um i'm a little bit wary generally with pine especially with lots of knots in because it can be just a little bit savage in places but there's quite a lot of meat to take off so we've used the scrub plane now we'll go back to the number four and see if we can level that off i don't mind if there's little bits of texture finished in because uh, it'll just give you that nice uh, worn in feel to it all what we do need is for it to be perfectly flat across there otherwise your computer monitor is going to go all wobbly So there we have one nice leveled top. Of course, the only problem is we have to do the bottom side as well. Now, if you're still watching at this point, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash the like thumb as well. And the little bell thing, put it on. Go on. Here we are then, nice and flat. Uh, lovely to touch. I'll give it a, a decent sanding over. Uh, so it's really, really nice to the touch. There's still some places, like here, where there's a dent in there that I've actually accentuated a little bit with a chisel. And there's a few places like that one uh, that's got a bit of a gouge to it, but actually, but it's smooth to the touch because we've gone over it with the sandpaper. That kind of character, we'll call that, I want to keep bits of that. Uh, there's areas here like this pattern stuff that we find, um, where the the plane doesn't get quite in there, we're gonna stain this next, and that, that pattern there will really bring out the stain and really give it some extra um, volume to the character and volume to the colors as well. So the few of the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed this top corner uh, in some of the clips so far uh, has been a great big chip out. So again, I've just gone in there with a carving chisel smoothed it out gone over with some sandpaper that's going to look lovely uh, this pencil line along here is where i'm going to cut off all the way along so we, we're not going to have this back section um, because it only wants to be a certain depth it's not a full three planks so the next point after that is to stain it right so the next section is to put the stain on so we don't want to just leave this a monotone color we've done the physical part to the board but now we want to really make it look the part. Uh, now I'm going to use um, a natural oak colour. You can put whatever colour you want on. You might do walnut or a mahogany or whatever colour you, you fancy. But what we find is when we look at the, the real raw boards is that they have a different colour heartwood and then they have a sapwood towards the end which is usually much lighter in colour. So we're going to need to grade that in as well. So what I like to do is leave a couple of inches or so on the front edge bare and then go in from the stain from that. So the line where that comes in again will follow these grain lines. So again, just try and make it as natural as possible. And each time we put a, a second or third coat of the stain on, we can just layer that back and grade it in. And it just looks like it's been there and that's the growth brings the color that's come through over the generations. Right, time to get the brushes out then. So again, I'm just trying to pick a prominent grain that's going to be easy to follow. There's a nice one there. It's just a matter of trying to follow that with your brush.
So there's the first coat done and finished all the way through. Now, that looks like a startling contrast, doesn't it, at the moment between the unfinished and the stained stuff. That will mellow out a lot when we put oil on this part. This kind of yellows this off. Um, so it really does kind of take that stark contrast out of the way. Um, you might find when you're doing your brushes that you just get little marks on like this. Don't worry too much about that. A little fine go over with some sandpaper gets that off. And if you think that your edge is a little bit stiff, so maybe a little bit too solid, again, just a real light run over with some sandpaper just softens that up again. So after the second coat's put on, you can see we just grade that first one back. Uh, doing this project really helps us understand what happens with grain patterns, because you can see here how on this one, well, it all just follows the same, pretty much runs parallel. But at this point, the grain's actually heading a different direction and then start coming back in and out and weave all the way through. So you can see the tone difference there just with one coat of the oil that this part's nicely covered and then this half isn't and it really just dulls it down and combines the two plus obviously protecting that wood as well uh, it just makes it quite not as stark as the plain wood over there well there we have it one live raw edge oak slab well almost if you can find an eight foot tall two foot wide slab of raw edge oak well well done to you i wouldn't like to pay the bill for it mate um with this this is cost so it's three scaffold planks that's done this and we've got about four and a half five foot left over from each of those planks as well and they're 10 pounds each absolutely next to nothing um so a little bit of time in the workshop, which is what we're all here for, isn't it? Uh, you can make something that looks absolutely gorgeous and you can sit there going, I made that. I'm, you see that? I made that. So it's really nice when we can do that. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, if you click down here, you can follow the playlist for other weekend projects. If you click up here, uh, you can watch more Technique Tuesdays, which is very, very good. Um, so until next time, sharpen your tools and I'll see you soon.